Welcome to Luxor. <laughs> what I have to talk about is unrelated to Luxor, but I thought this is nice. And if we're lucky, we might get some balloons. One thing I hear a lot is that people tell me they're stuck with a very limited vocabulary. They can't fully say what they want to say. They've got to a certain point where they can get by and it becomes really difficult to learn vocab. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how to keep learning vocabulary when you're more intermediate, when you're more advanced, so that you can continue to improve. First up, just before we get started, I have a mini online course all about vocab, about how to learn it, how to make it finally stick. It's called Vibrant Vocab. I'll pop a little thing in the description so you can grab the link there if you're interested. And before we get into the how-to, it is worth addressing why this happens, kind of what this is. So there is this thing called fossilization. And what that means, what that describes is when you get to a point in a language where you can get by, you can do what you need to do, and you're mostly understood, even if it's not perfect, elaborate fluency, mostly you're understood. And so what tends to happen there is that you stay where you are and any mistakes that you do have, because you're not perfect, you're just like, good enough to get by, but any mistakes that you do then have get fossilized. They get stuck where they are and they don't get improved because you don't bother to correct them because you feel like, well, I'm being understood, that's enough. And other people that you speak with don't bother to correct them because they can still understand you. So there's this weird kind of stage. And often that's like a limited vocabulary, but we know that there's still more we can do. And so it's a really, really natural thing that happens with lots and lots of people in second language learning. So it's nothing to worry about. But what we're going to talk about today when the fly gets off my nose is how we can actually intentionally keep learning and keep moving past this to help avoid fossilization. And I want to really focus on how to find new vocab to learn, what to do, because I think that's where the big part of the problem is. In terms of like how to learn vocab, it's in vibrant vocab, you probably have your own ideas at this point if you've already got to this level in a language, but it's just finding the new stuff that's right for you. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. The first suggestion I have for you is to use the app Drops. So Drops is a language app that is very thorough. <laughs> so when you're a beginner, like it starts with all the simple stuff, but when you kind of scroll through the list of vocab lists, essentially, that it gives you to learn, some of them are so like weirdly niche and advanced and you think why would I ever need this but then you get to the point where you're more intermediate you're more advanced and actually that becomes really useful so drops is really good for giving you kind of situational sets of vocab that you can then learn together in a very familiar app-like format I have one more app to suggest for you like a stereotypical language app and that is close master there are so many flies here today. Close Master is great at this level because it gives you the full sentence and you put in the blank. And again, it's one of those apps that if you try as a beginner, you might think, this is never gonna help, this is never gonna get me fluent. But actually, when you get higher up in that level, it becomes really, really useful. The other great thing is that you have these different levels for a lot of languages where things are kind of layered out in the most common words, frequency word lists and fluency fast track and all of these different ways that you can order words and you can even add your own. They have this great additional AI feature too where you can tap this explain button after a sentence, after you've had a go at a sentence and that will give you this explanation of the whole sentence. So as you're more intermediate, as you're more advanced, you can tap through to each word, you can understand more about how those words are used in context. Just really, really useful tool. And my third suggestion is kind of half app, half website because it's mostly used on the web, but there is an app version that I've discovered that's really, really useful. Maybe I think I'll talk about it on its own one day, and that is Wikipedia. So reading Wikipedia is something that I love to do in lots of different languages because it gives me something that I can, well, it gives me so much choice of what I want to read about, but I get to choose if it's something random, if it's something specific related to the vocab topic I want to improve, if it's something that I'm interested in. You can have a little look around, you can find so much that you can be um, reading. And if you're on the app, you can of course click and translate individual words, depending on the language and your phone, you might be able to click 
the sort of auto read feature to hear the whole article spoken. So yeah, a really underrated resource that can give you more vocabulary, especially around specific topics that you want to practice. And again, on the theme of finding something that interests you, listen to podcasts. So it's not just about finding vocab through reading. Listening is also really useful because of course, when we speak, we're basically 50% listening. We need to understand what's being said to us. So it's a really important skill to continue to practice as well in our learning. And so when we do vocab practice, we should absolutely bring in some listening. So finding some podcasts about topics that interest you, about topics that you want to expand your vocab on can be a really useful tool. And podcasts specifically, because you can repeat little sections, you can slow them down, you can do all of these little tools and tweaks that you can't always do with other resources. Find synonyms and antonyms. So one of the easiest ways to expand what you can say and be more specific I feel like that's the big thing when we're learning new vocab is we often end up saying good and we want to say wow that was wonderful thank you so much <laughs> and so we just go good which is fine as a beginner but as you want to advance and you want to be more specific and say exactly what you mean synonyms and antonyms is where things really begin to expand for example you can probably already say I speak as in I speak French I speak English but can you say I shout I whisper I murmur and what are the subtle differences between all of those words? So learning that and understanding that is a great way to expand, intentionally expand your vocabulary. Take a lemma approach. So lemma is a fancy linguistics word and it basically means like the root, the core of a sort of word group, if you like. And then you have these things called lexemes that come off from that root lemma. So I'll give you an example. So eat, let's say that eat is a lemma and then we have eight eating, eaten, eats, all of those variations that are the same broad meaning, but just with those little tweaks, those little specifics, that's what we're talking about here. And this works really interestingly in different languages. So for example, with Arabic, you have those three consonant patterns, right? So where KTB is always something to do with writing. So for example, kitab, meaning book, maktab, meaning desk, that sort of thing, right? So you can be learning specifically those patterns or those roots, whatever it might be in the language that you're learning, and then intentionally learning all of those expanded words connected to that. In Spanish, in French, this now means it's time to learn all of those verb conjugations. Have fun! And finally here, use three lists. So everything I've suggested so far is pretty much intentional vocab learning. It's when we're really making an effort, we're going out, we're trying to find the new words that we want to learn. But there is also space and definitely a benefit to incidental language learning. So when I talk about incidental language learning, I'm thinking of the stuff that happens unexpectedly. We're not intentionally learning vocab, we're doing something else and we just happen to come across new words. So for example, you're listening to a podcast, but not with the intention of finding new vocab, you're just listening, right? And then you come across some new vocab. <laughs> what do you do with it? Do you just ignore it? Or do you actually make a note of that? The three list idea then, the three list method, helps to take that pressure off of needing to learn everything that you incidentally encounter, or also needing to ignore it because it's incidental. Like it takes that decision out of your hands and it gives you a way that works. Those three lists then are one, and they could be lists like on your notes app on your phone. They, And this could be lists like a notes app on your phone. It could be a little, a little physical notebook times three, or maybe if you have one of those that has three little dividers in it, could, that could work really well too. And the idea is that the first list is for words that you absolutely 100% definitely want to learn, right? probably going to be smaller. It's probably going to be one of the smallest lists. So this is for words that you really, you've encountered and you think, yes, that's going to be useful. I'm going to see that again as I advance in this language. And as you may have guessed, that's also going to be your priority for what you learn. The second list is for words that you think, yeah, okay, I can see this might be useful, but also it's not like as major of a priority as that first list. But if I have time, it would be great to learn these words. And then the third list is for words that you think, okay, probably never gonna see that again. Or even, yeah, I could really figure that out. If it's like a big, long scientific word, but it's the same as your native language, then you don't need to learn it, but you also don't need 
<laughs> to think about it ever again because next time you see it you'll understand so it's for words that are like really just very very niche not that relevant to you or words that are really 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 obvious and what you can do is just keep track of these words so as you encounter a new word you think where does this belong is this something i really need to learn is this something i can learn if i have time or is this something that is just not worth learning but i just want to write it down i just want to get it on paper so that it's there it's written and i don't have to think about it ever again and the reason that this works so well is that you're then able to focus on what matters most you're not wasting your time learning this huge expanse of all the words you encounter where some actually aren't as relevant you start with the most important ones and then you expand out as and when you want to. So it works really, really well because it just prioritizes the important stuff. And that's the kind of thing that's going to help you to expand your vocabulary so you don't feel stuck with just this limited vocabulary anymore. You're able to move beyond that. You're able to go beyond the vocab plateau, essentially. And yeah, it's really, really helpful. If you want to know what to do next and how to learn vocabulary once you've gone through these intentional or incidental methods, then what I recommend for you is Vibrant Vocab. So in Vibrant Vocab, I show you how to learn vocabulary. I show you how words work so you can learn how to make them work for you and how to best learn them in ways that are going to actually work for you. And yeah, all that you need in terms of learning vocabulary finally and finally making it stick. If you want to know more, the link is in the description and I look forward to welcoming you in to Vibrant Vocab. All right, I will speak to you very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Do all of the YouTube things like follow, share, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Bye.